Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. And as promised, today is part two of working in the front garden, but clearly it is a new day because I was at the hairdressers and what I did the other day after planting the um, Acer in the front garden, which I love by the way. Um, the rest of the day, I was just doing like a little like random things. I was potting up some of my annuals. I was sowing in the vegetable garden. I did some direct sowing. I was sowing celery, uh, purple broccoli, and what was it? Oh, aubergine because all those aubergines that I was growing indoors they were the ones that I took outside last and they had a long time of hardening off and bit by bit they were just fizzling out so the variety was what was it it was a white one and then it was a purple one the purple one was called jackpot I believe so that was not a jackpot for me clearly so now I go with the graffiti variety let's see it's I've never grown eggplants ever in my entire life so I'm really intrigued to see what I'm going to get out of it but that is a different story still I'm planning to do another video in the vegetable garden because I just started preparing the last and the third raised bed to do some direct sowing in there as well and I think I'm going to make a video out of that just a quick short one maybe for a Wednesday or so but what I want to do obviously is I want to plant a little bit here and I have two things that I want to plant in here one is a perennial and one is an annual that I was sowing indoors which I always grow in this area here so as always I just quickly want to flip the phone and give you a quick tour again and just show you what I intend on planting and to be fair I think the perennial you've already seen it because editing the video with the A so I was like well clearly I already put those containers here just to see how I like them in that area so if you had a close eye my last video you could already spot that something else is on its way so hope you're excited to join me in today's planting video. Clearly we are in the morning because there's a little bit of shade here in the front garden and that comes from the big linden tree here. The entire road is planted up with those and they looked super nice a couple of years ago, but then bit by bit they start fizzling out and a couple of years ago the city decided to cut back a lot of the branches. It kind of bounced back and it looks nice now and I hope it's going to pull through this year because last year and the previous year, I would say about July time, it looked miserable. So I'm really hoping that it will be a nice mild year, some more moisture eventually, so that the trees are definitely going to pull through. But Acer looks fantastic. I really love it, especially as I said before with the combination of the beautiful epimedium in the front of the border here. And then as I continue walking, you already saw two of the containers standing here. So I'm just going to give you a closer look at them because it is a label. So you can also take a screenshot if you wanted to. Where is it? Here. So this is Nifofia ice queen i'm so excited about them i had an eye on them for quite a good long time already but they were sold out for two years and now finally i got the hands on six of them so i'm thrilled i'm going to give you all the information about them obviously in a second so two of them are going to go here on this side of the border and they are the ones that will get most of the shade during the day then I have two more just behind the beautiful drift of tulips, napeta and calamagrostis grass. This is Carl Furster, a great variety. And then some hackney chloe that just comes back. And then I think two more of those nephophias will be absolutely perfect here. And the great thing is I put them here in the border already for quite a while now. I haven't watered them at all and they still look amazing. So they do not require a lot of water, which is always ideal, I think. And then the last two, they're going to go in a different area. This is the south facing bed. So they will have most of the th uh, sun throughout the entire day. And I think this will be just the perfect location for them because here are um, Euphorbia in the front. There is Napata in the front. And there was another Euphorbia which decided to die during winter, basically. So I can just pull this out. And then I have a lovely space here. I have Panacetum here. This is... Oh, I forgot something red. I'm going to tell you later. When it comes to flower and I do my garden tour, then I'm going to give you all the information about it. They look really nice and they really came back to life quite early. There was a good variety of panacea, but I think that they were just a beautiful addition here. And then the last thing that I want to plant goes here. Exact same location where I planted it last year because I really loved the look and I think they worked so well. So these are my zinnias, green envy variety. I'm so happy with them and they are so happy and they're tiny modules still. Look, haven't potted them on. So I think that they will be so grateful once they are in the ground finally. One was eaten by a slower snail, but all the others look fantastic, but the ones that were on the outside here, so I think they just suffered from no water basically. And you can tell that slugs and snails were just finding their way over here, but 
They are looking great, so that is perfect. And I'm gonna put them here in the front and then in the back there, so I have just enough plants, I believe. And then it's gonna be so glorious around August time because then I have the asters here, then I have more asters here in the front, the miscanthus, nepeda. I think they're gonna be like a really wonderful drift and a color combination. I did it like this last year and I was extremely happy and thrilled by this look. But what I wanna do now is give you all the information about the Nephophia first. I'm so excited to finally introduce Nephophia to my garden because they really bring this element of texture and they have such a glorious architectural value that I think I'm definitely missing here in the front garden. So I'm so thrilled to put six of those in here. Normally when I plant something you know, in my garden, I like to plant a bigger drift or bigger blobs, but since I never grew those, I just want to test them first. And I think six of them is a good amount because then I can always have blobs of two. Normally I would do three, but I think two is now fine as well in different areas here so we can have a good eye on it and just really see how they perform and where they thrive best and hopefully they thrive great everywhere because then I can amp up my game in the next year to come. These beauties they originate in South Africa in Cape province but they are definitely a fine plant for every single garden and I think what is so special about them is the foliage because they really look grassy. So if you do have limited space in your garden and you don't really want to lose a space for example for ornamental grasses this might be just the right plant for you if you still like the airiness that grasses bring but you want to have blooms they are absolutely fantastic because they combine both elements wonderfully. What is very exciting is that they are evergreen throughout winter as well and this is something that I constantly try to improve and work on in my own garden here because in the front garden you know once everything is stripped back after winter there is just a field of mulch and almost nothing and it really takes quite a long time for spring to finally kick in here. There are the evergreen euphorbia is just in your back in the south facing garden next to the wall but there's nothing here and I don't think that the euphorbia will thrive here because they really need to have the protection and the heat that comes from the house so I think that they would be just fantastic because if we enter the house from the driveway which is just over there I can have a good eye on these and then I will hopefully going to have this beautiful green foliage throughout winter. Common name for Nephophia is torch lily and that really explains the flowers because they literally look like torches and also most of the varieties in terms of color look like torches because they come in all different shades of bright orange and buttercup yellow colors that I normally don't really use in my own garden but this variety icy queen is just perfect because of blooms they appear in an icy yellow kind of like lemony yellow and as these flowers age they age to really nice whitish tone and what intrigued me as well is that the pollen inside has a color kind of like burned orange. So it is a beautiful contrast, the pollen with the bloom and all of this on very long torches, literally. This variety, the single flower spikes, they get one meter 20 in height, which is really towering. And I think it's beautiful amongst all of these plants because then I have this whimsical element from some soft grasses. I have the nepeta, and then I have these beautiful kind of like skyrocketing flower spikes that would really intrigue me. In terms of location, they thrive best in full sun so I'm kind of predicting that in your back in the south facing garden they will love their life there and here I think that they will hopefully be all right the ones that are just next to the A so I can tell that they're already in the sun now so the ones that go into my back they will have the most shade throughout the entire day but then I can have a good eye on it over this entire year and see how they will perform. The last thing is the soil and this is wonderful with this variety here they are not fuzzy in the slightest. They like good drainage, they like a neutral normal garden soil what I have and they don't mind if they dry out which is also ideal because you know in my back there is a big willow tree that takes a lot of the moisture so this is definitely a good um, inning that is in this plant and I think it's going to thrive extremely well here. When I plant it I'm not going to enrich the soil in this area here because I've done it over the past year so I just planted dead level with some organic bone chips in the planting hole and that's all there is before I plant these. I just want to give you some quick information about the zinnias because they are one of my favorite varieties. They are absolutely great. And I try and convince you to maybe try and grow some of those in your own garden as well. I grew zinnias first time ever last year and I instantly fell in love with them because they're just so dang easy. I wish that slugs and snails would not like to munch on them so much. Unfortunately, they do, but I think this year, fingers crossed, knock on wood, I'm gonna be a little luckier than last year because I think last year I lost pretty much 50% of all my plants. But this looks like a good flying start. It's so easy to sow them and I started these, I think, 
six weeks ago, probably six weeks ago, and they are definitely looking little robust plants. And you can tell that they are in very small modules. So it will be good to plant them on. They haven't started rooting out, which kind of surprises me. So I think what I'm going to do is just see if I get these actually out of their containers, which I might, yes, I do not losing any roots, I think. They have tiny little roots, and this is very typical for annuals in general. They do not produce big flashy roots. They produce kind of like smaller shallow roots, so this is why they definitely require a kind of consistent water level. And this is also why they focus um, a lot of the energy on producing these blooms, but they reward you with so many blooms because they start flowering in about July time. And then for me, they were flowering all the way through until late October, really, which is fantastic. Foliage, very nice, a little bit fluffy. Green, um, the plants, they do not grow to a big shrub for me. So you really should plant them a little bit thicker and dense to have a wonderful drift effect because they kind of look a little, I don't want to say leggy, but this is literally what they do. But then the blooms are fantastic. And zinnias come in a big range of all different colors. So there is something for everybody. There are these kind of like dainty colors, kind of like blush. This is a green variety, so it kind of fits everywhere. So it's definitely chartreuse green, which I love in here in the front garden. But you also have like your bright red and orange and pink, beautiful pink tones. So I definitely think you will find your zinnia um, and just the right location for it in your own garden. What I did is I replaced a little, or will replace a little bit of this soil. So this is our natural native soil here. It is, there are literally yellow clumps in here, which is sandy, it just crumbles apart as I lift it. But surprisingly, the fact that it is quite sandy, I was just digging a little bit and it's not wet or damp, but it is nice and moist. And I really put it down to the fact that I mulch everything with wood chips because it is protected. And that the, is exposed to the sun for the biggest part of the day, which is, by the way, ideal for zinnias because they require full sun. Don't even try it in partly shade, you won't have a lot of flowers. So what I will do now is I will come in with a little bit of good fresh garden soil, some organic bone chips, and by some I definitely mean a little more now because I really want to give all the goodness to the plants that I can. And then all I do is I always dig it under and I hit a stone, I think, or something, I'm not sure. By the way, yeah. Well, this is even concrete. Okay, that goes out. If you have stones in your garden, a lot of people always say, oh, remove the stones. Small pebbles are not a bad thing in general. Oh, here you can tell, it's literally yellow here. So it's always good for me to come in with some good fresh soil to keep those plants happy and going. So this looks fairly nice and good now. And what I do, very easy, I already lifted one, I come out with this. And then I'm just going to plant it a little bit deeper in this case because they were a little leggy. And what I would do as well is to pinch them. But because last year, this is exactly what I did. And I think I did it a little too early on some of those plants because I pinched them and then they tried to branch out. But then slugs and snails came in and they were just starting to munch their way from the bottom and then there was nothing left. And I think this year I'm going to change my plan and strategy a little bit because there is one that has a little slug damage here. So the last leaf here is already halfway eaten, but then I still have a lot of top growth here, which looks perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna leave them alone a little longer and see what happens, because I think that this is gonna bound to work better. There are no slugs and snails sitting underneath. I was just like, oh, are these pots maybe like the problem now? But no, they seem to be fine. I'm gonna have a closer eye on that. So what I will do is like plumb my way through here, have a wonderful drift of them. And later on in the year, I think I still have a photo that I can just pop them in eventually. It just looks really magical here. I just love this little corner and I just wanna recreate it. Last year, I had one sneaky pink one in here, which looked fantastic because it was kind of like, everything was like lovely green zinnias and then one pink one. And in my mind, I thought maybe I should just buy Buy a pack of pink zinnias and just put one pink in here again. I haven't done it so far but this idea is still lingering around in my head because it's like this momentum of imperfection that made it actually look hyper perfect. So let's see. This is what I'm going to do. Plant here, plant all the nithophias and give you one last two in the end.
it's clear blue skies by now. The sun is out. Well, the sun was out before, but now it's kind of like it's warm and it's nice. I think I can just drop my sweater in a second. Alfie is with me just lying under the swing bench. This is where I am right now. And I think this was just the perfect way on how to start a day with some lovely planting. And I'm so happy to see how things really come together here. The front garden, that was never so much work because I have my planting scheme that I made and it worked. It worked pretty much straight from the beginning. So I was just tweaking here and there in just a little bit. And I think the Nephophia would be just a wonderful addition because I was missing this element of architecture and they will bring that. There's one more thing that I was missing. I'm pretty sure I haven't told you when the Nephophia comes to bloom. That is gonna happen between July and September which is wonderful because then I have something here in late summer going all the way into autumn and then they will flower the same time as my asters will because I have big drifts of aster astra in here flowering in a wonderful tone of violet and I think this violet in combination with the lemon yellow of the nephophia will be just wonderful. One last thing I will give you the links for both of the plants the links if you want to buy the nephophia I'm going to give you the link to the nursery and also if you want to buy the seeds for the green and the uh, Xenia Green Envy, this is how you say it, because I know that that is Xenia Envy, but this is Green Envy. I'm not sure if there really is a difference. I think there is. This one is going to grow 80 centimeters in height. I loved it last year, so just in case, both links are just down below the video. What I want to get, do now is give you one last look at everything, and I think I'm going to do it from here, from the swing bench, because a vista from here is really beautiful into the garden now. Alfie enjoys the view into the garden as well, just sitting underneath the swing bench. And this is the view that she and I, we're both enjoying right now. Isn't that just really beautiful? I still love the Acer. I think that was a wonderful addition. All these shades of like yellow and chartreuse, all these blooms and textures, just loving it. The Euphorbia, this massive one against the house wall is just great. But let me just quickly show you how the Nephophia are looking in here. So there are Nephophia obviously in here. Then I have more Nephophia, well, just hiding behind the bearded iris. So I've got two Nephophia there. They were so nice with the Asa, I believe. And then more Euphobia here next to the Rubinia. Here I really came in and improved the soil because this is a patch of the garden where the soil is hyper sandy. There is sandy and then there is next level sandy and this is next level sandy. So I came in with a lot of fresh, good soil, some organic bone chips, dug it all under and I think they'd be very happy in here. Tonight I'm going to do a big round of watering. So I will water everything in thoroughly. I've already watered very quickly the zinnias though because they were dry. They were yeah, they were just like dusty dry almost. So I thought, okay, there is no time but the presence to do it. Big drift here in the front, and then you kind of just like have a second drift here as a second layer just behind the beautiful sedum. I think they're gonna look so beautiful. What I need to do though is do my rounds in the evening and in the morning and have an eye on them. If any slugs or snails are gonna try to attack these. That is it for today's video. I hope you had fun with that. I always have fun sharing this garden moments with you. And I also want to say thank you for watching today's video. I think this is something I don't say nearly often enough and I should really do every single video because I am really thankful for everybody who watches the video. And if you can take something out of it and if you join me on my journey through the garden and what I do in here and how I try to work in here and improve the garden and just make it a lovelier space. What I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to start the season of iced coffee because it really feels lovely and warm and I think it's just the perfect opportunity to have an iced coffee at my swing bench. I'm going to do it though what we call the American way of iced coffee because that in America you put ice cubes in there. Well if you order an iced coffee in Germany you're still going to get a scoop of vanilla ice cream in your iced coffee and I think that is maybe a little bit too happy having such a dessert even before I had lunch. So this is what I'm going to do. Thank you again for watching today's video and I would love to welcome you in my garden next time around. Take care guys. Bye.